Hi everybody, it's Elizabeth from Elvis Astrology at ElvisAstrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I'm going to do my uh, interpretation of July 2022 astrology. Um, and as always, I would enjoy doing your chart, should you like that to be done. Subscribe to me on Instagram, uh, as well as my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to start off here with the first moon uh, or lunation of the month that we have. And that's going to be on the 13th of July, 2022. It's a full moon in Capricorn. Uh, it will be at 21 Capricorn 21 at 11.38 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So the full moon, we have the moon in one sign, and in this case it's Capricorn, and then the sun's in the opposite sign, and in this case, of course, it's going to be Cancer. Um, the sun will conjunct Mercury in Cancer. The moon will widely conjunct Pluto, also in Capricorn, the very last degrees. And Venus which is now in Gemini, will be squaring off Neptune in uh, Pisces. So we've got a combination of effects here, but certainly um, if you do have something around the 21 degree mark of Capricorn, of course I'm speaking specifically maybe of Capricorn suns or Capricorn ascendants, this is a wrap up for you. And because we've got the moon, you know, within proximity of Pluto, there's going to be an element of transformation that will go with this ending um, that will be important for you. If you have something around this degree point, 21 degrees of uh, Capricorn or 21 degrees of Cancer, the opposite sign. But certainly we've got some kind of message being given out here with regards to um, the homeland, because it's Cancer, we're talking about the sun in Cancer, the homeland something to do with maybe nurturing or mothers could be to the fore. And because we've got Venus here in uh, Gemini squaring off Neptune, um, this says there's a, an integration that has to happen here at this full moon where we let go of some perhaps very old ways, um, maybe even archaic ways of doing things. Um, and we need to incorporate... Um, more compassion, certainly, that's, that's Neptune. Uh, perhaps compassion for uh, different ways that people communicate. So I really saw this whole month of July as a, a time when a lot more things are going to be coming forward with regards to changes in our culture, um, things that we have to change individually, but also as a culture and a society, Things are going to be spoken about a lot more, new programs being set in place, that sort of thing. So this full moon, to me, says we're going to be letting go of all these things that are archaic, like I mentioned, um, that are kind of holding us back almost. We, we've almost got Pluto out of Capricorn into new wave, new, new beginnings, new thinking, uh, Aquarius next year, right? So I view in many ways this is a tie-up of that finality of letting go of structures, ways of thinking, archaic things, um, old structures that, you know, aren't working properly. They're just plodding along. Um, and this, like I said, is probably going to come with maybe changes uh, and perhaps in the USA in particular, uh, announced changes to the way we're doing things with certain structures, right? Um, but it will be transformational. That's, there's no question about that with that wide uh, conjunction with Pluto. Could be also changes with our money, announcements made with regards to that. Venus represents money, and of course Gemini represents um, communication, facts, that sort of thing. Now with that square to Neptune, this could also be that there's some facts obscured at this time. Um, so that's another thing that I guess we have to watch out for too. I mean, that, that goes uh, as good advice at any time, you know, don't believe everything you hear. But this is one set up with the, the Venus square Neptune that perhaps that is the case. And maybe individually, um, some of us may experience this. 
All right, so if we go to the 22nd of July, we have Mercury is now at five degrees of Leo. And this, of course, is where the new moon in Leo is going to be on the 28th of July, and I'll cover that in a minute. Um, we do have the sun at this time at that anorotic degree of 29 degrees of Cancer. So I think that this is going to be a day or maybe a couple days of some kind of big flourishing announcement of some sort. And it could come through royalty and it could come through our Hollywood royalty as well. Um, but it kind of is a foreshadowing a little bit of what's going to be happening at the new moon, you know, a few days later on the 28th. So watch what comes up around the 22nd of July uh, with regards to grandiose announcements um, or messages being given out uh, that seem very um, sort of unusual, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, but the other thing too, of course, is, is that um, this announcement, because we've still got this final degree of the sun in Cancer, we could be, see something where there's going to be an announcement about a program for social welfare, right? That could also be the case here. But if we look at this from a negative Stanford or not so positive, uh, we could have somebody uh, like a celebrity or royalty um, sort of spouting off a lot of hot air. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what, there will be something that will bring drama and attention to some kind of announcement or message around this time. And it's gonna be predicated by this new moon a few days later where something different will be presented, but there's a tie-in. All right, so let's get to that. So we've got this new moon in Leo, which I just, every time I look at this new moon, I get excited about it. Um, so happy birthday to all Leos and Leo risings, right? Um, this is your, your new moon of the year. It is on the 28th of July at 5 Leo 39 minutes at 11.56 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So this really um, is, is the, the turning point of the summer in many ways, where we have parties, celebrations, romances, um, and just having fun. And this new moon just embraces all that type of thinking. There are a few things that, you know, we may have to work out. But generally speaking, I saw this as a really positive uh, new moon that... Uh, a lot of people will be having fun and enjoying themselves. So plan for something around the 28th of July. And certainly if you've got your birthday on the 28th of July, this could set up um, a whole new beginning for you for the whole year, your whole birthday year, right? So at this time, we're going to have Mercury in Leo, and it will be squaring Uranus at 18 degrees. And also the north nodes are very, very close at this time too to Uranus. So we really have a Mercury square, not only Uranus at 18 degrees, but the North nodes. They're at 19, but that's awfully close, right? So I would say that this also, this new moon in Leo, uh, from a mundane standpoint, is going to have some kind of significance with regard to our destiny path. And it may come about a way that's unexpected because that whole Uranus is unexpected surprise, right? And again, we've got Mercury attached here. And so I would say that not only is this influencing the new moon in Leo uh, here at the end of July, but the other thing is, is that this could also be a foreshadowing of culminating effects of that total full moon eclipse that we're going to have in Taurus in November this year because it's going to be at 18 degrees, right? So we've got this 18 degree mark um, that's being activated here. So there's going to be some challenge and maybe even difficulties that we have to overcome uh, with regards to some kind of integration with regards to, um, you know, our destiny path that will come into full effect uh, at that total eclipse that's going to be in November. So there is a tie in here. So do watch what goes on. And if you've got anything at 18 degrees of Leo uh, or 18 degrees of Taurus, you will be affected by this. 
uh, in some way. And it doesn't have to be a negative thing, right? Squares, I always say, ask us to think outside the box. And if you think about Leo, Leo is a very creative sign, right? So Leo, what does it pertain to? Leo pertains to romance, especially true love. Uh, it pertains to children. It's our artistic selves. It's at its core asking us to express our authentic self. So it's being authentic, right? That's going to be big things that come up at this time in relation to new love, true love, children. It's also your own business and games of chance. So all these areas could come up depending where this falls in your own chart, right? But like I said, from a mundane standpoint, this is a turning point for us uh, in terms of our destiny path. Um, the other thing that happens at this new moon is we have Mars will widely be trining Chiron in Aries. Uh, and this is a positive thing. Trines are always favorable energy. It's just that they can go by. They're so favorable that they can go by without us really noticing it. So to me, this is positive action with regards to our health. And again, depending where this falls on your chart will depend what it actually plays out to be. But overall, this is a positive thing with regards to our health. And in particular, of course, we're talking about our health from a global standpoint with all the various types of um, viruses that we've had going around, right? I thought it was interesting. I looked at, you know, the birthdays that were happening around the 28th of July and um, Lori Loughlin uh, turned up uh, on my feed with regards to her uh, having her birthday at this time. She also has her, her moon in... Um, Pisces and it's conjuncting Neptune at this time. So there may be something obscured for her at this time emotionally, uh, but it could also represent a new start for her uh, with regards to many things that she's been through, uh, much of which she generated herself. Uh, but this could be um, a new beginning for her at this time, especially with regards to her image. All right. So the other thing that we have happening at the same new moon, so this is a a huge sort of new moon uh, change up type of thing that's going to be happening around this the end of July. We also have Jupiter going retrograde at eight degrees of Aries. Now Jupiter will go back to 29 degrees of Pisces right up to the end of December 2022 uh, and then it will go back into full swing into Aries but it'll meet this eight degree of Aries point in mid-February uh, of 2023. So if you've got something around eight degrees of Aries, whatever occurs around this new moon will be a significator uh, to be visited again mid-February. So check to see what house this is in, I guess, is what I'm saying, because it's almost like you'll have a second chance or a second go uh, mid-February if you've got eight degrees highlighted in Aries somewhere in your chart. You can leave me comments and we can sort of discuss this back and forth as per usual. All right, so enjoy this new moon uh, in Leo. I just want to leave you with the, the thought of have some parties, have some celebrations, dive into a romance um, and just have some fun uh, during this summer. We've all had a lot of stress going on over the past few years. All right, so we're going to wrap up the 31st of July where we have Mars is going to be conjuncting Uranus in um, Taurus at still at 18 degrees. So July ends with a bang. I guess you could say it begins with a bang if you celebrate Canada Day as well as uh, Independence Day in the USA. And then we end on the 31st with um, Planet of Action conjuncting planet of surprise and unexpected events. So all I got to say is July will end with some big surprise of some sort. And I mean, this could play out various ways. It literally can play out by fireworks going off, uh, either metaphorically or literally. Um, it can also have, because it's in an earth sign of Taurus, it could have some kind of earthquake or volcano type thing, or eruption of some sort to do with the earth happen at this time. That could happen too. But it could also represent some 
uh, unexpected sudden movement and aggression, right? Because Mars can be aggressive as well, right? And Mars is associated with um, military things, um, that type of stuff. So it could be something else happens again in that area. Um, and like I said, this is that same degree point, 18 degrees of Taurus, that that total eclipse in November 2022 will happen. So all this stuff that's happening in July with regards to that 18 degree point is going to be significant as it gets tied up in November at a full moon total eclipse, right? Yeah. So pay attention to what's going on in your own personal life, but also in the world events as well. I did want to just cover the Sabian symbol. I do this once in a while with regards to that new moon in Leo because I thought it was important for me to add a little bit of an extra message. So it was interesting because what we always, um, you know, round up the degree and of course uh, it rounds up to six degrees of Leo. And the message that goes with this or saying is a conservative old fashioned lady is confronted by a hippie girl. Of course, this was written, I guess, back in the 60s and 70s. But it really speaks to the traditional meeting up with the unconventional. And, you know, by association, we're now talking about cultural values, right? So it's one generation to the next uh, value different things and what they view as, say, decent. Um, and so this really, I think, ties in perfectly with this new moon where, you know, we're all going to be going around strutting our stuff. Um, but we also have to take into consideration everyone that has their own stuff and their, their own value system, right? What do you love? That's going to be coming up. That's what I got with this too. Um, it also says to me that we sometimes need to embrace the new, right? Even though it's unusual, it's not what we've been brought up with. Um, just because we've been brought up with something, something doesn't mean it can't change. So this refers to change in our society and our cultural values. All right, next I'm going to do each of the individual signs and ascendants um, and just give you a little bit of what I think uh, is going to be coming up for you at the full moon and the new moon in July 2022. But remember, as always, we all have free will to do what we feel is appropriate for us at this time in our life. Um, and as always, I love to do your chart and love to hear from you, your comments, and we can chat back and forth. All right, Scorpio. Now, Scorpio, you are still hosting the south nodes of the moon here. So that's all that letting go for Scorpios. And hopefully some of the letting go Scorpio for you has been cathartic um, and, and not um, so, um, so unpleasant that it actually feels good once you've let go of some of the stuff that you need to let go of in your life. And of course, it all depends where all these things fall in your chart. So the full moon that's in Capricorn on the 13th of July, Scorpio, is going to be in your third house. And this full moon is going to sextile your sign. So this is the signal of opportunities. So I would say with the third house, just on the surface, any kind of communications coming in for you around the 13th of July, you should pay attention to. Because some opportunity, some little nugget might be in there for you, Scorpio. Uh, that's a benefit to you, right? Now it's a full moon, so it's a tie up. So maybe you hear or get messages of something of, work, of a conclusion of some sort. Now, the other thing that this covers, of course, is sales and commerce. So maybe you're tying up some kind of big deal with regards to a commercial venture. Um, and this signals that at this full moon. But the other thing too is the third house represents writing. So you may be tying up some writing. Now, typically we're talking about maybe writing some educational courses, but it can literally be writing as in a book. It's not publishing, but it's actually doing the writing. But it is a tie up, right? So it's a full moon tie up here. So maybe you are finishing off some writing of some sort. Um, the other thing that this represents are your siblings and your neighbors. So maybe something will be culminating with regards to both those as well. Um, and it's in Capricorn, so Capricorn's associated with, um, you know, the traditional ways of doing things. 
Um, so you may just decide, I just don't want to do this kind of communications anymore. Maybe some of the communications that you've been doing, maybe even presenting or talking or writing, is too staid for you. And you decide that you want to change that up. And certainly the uh, new moon that's going to be coming up, which I'll talk about next, may really support that. And in fact, I think there might be a tie in here for you. So let's go on to this new moon uh, that's going to be in Leo. That's going to be in your 10th house of career and long term goals. Now it forms a square. So a square, as I always say, is you got to do some thinking outside the box, right? Or creatively think about how to um, put a solution in place with regards to something happening with regards to your career. And there may be a tie in though with that full moon. Uh, there may have been something there. Maybe as I said, you were doing some writing, it's now finished. And you need to incorporate that in some way in your career. Hey, it's in Leo. Just be creative. But remember, you've got to be your authentic self. And sometimes you've just got to take a risk in your career. Um, the square says you will be challenged, but it doesn't mean you can't do it, Scorpio. As always, check with people who you trust before you make a big leap or take a big risk. But you may be up for taking a risk in your career at this time. Uh, but it is going to have a bit of challenge for you. It doesn't mean you can't do it. Like I said, be creative, believe in you, be your authentic self. Um, and certainly if children are involved in any way, um, this, this could be very significant for you. All right, take care of yourself, Scorpio, and keep letting go. All right, so that wraps things up. Uh, from my standpoint for July 2022, I've kept it kind of brief with regards to my introduction. I'm sure there's other things going on um, that my, my viewers will remind me of. Um, take care of yourself. I want to leave you with this. So I'm making this, this video in um, sort of mid-June 2022. I really want everybody to consider enjoying themselves and having fun this summer. Being open to love, being open to truly loving those around you and have lots of fun with those children in your life, the big children as well as the small children this summer. I see a lot of smiling and a lot of laughing this summer. Make sure you're one of them. Take care everybody and we will see you next time for my, my August video. Bye for now.